Conflicts arise between Ukraine and the West over F-16 pilot training. Ukraine and its Western allies are engaged in discussions regarding the speed and scale of training F-16 fighter pilots. In Kiev, they are demanding that their partners expand the program, but the allies say that Ukrainian pilots are not yet ready to fly the F-16 on mass rights politico. According to Ukrainian officials, Ukraine has 30 pilots who are ready to begin training on these aircraft, but due to insufficient space at training centers in the United States and Denmark, they are unable to do so. Officials said they urgently need more pilots ready to fly planes to help counter Russian occupiers on the battlefield. However, US officials noted that the planes will arrive in tranches and the training center in Arizona can only train 12 pilots at a time. When they deploy these capabilities, you want them to be able to use them effectively. The F-16 won't do any good if it gets destroyed on day one, explained one senior Defense Department official anonymously. At the same time, a representative of the Ministry of Defense denied Ukraine's statement that 30 pilots are waiting to begin training. According to him, the Ukrainians who are in line have problems with the English language and the flight program. The amount of training on the F-16 is quite scanty, the official noted. In addition, Western officials in Brussels said Ukraine needs not only pilots, but also maintenance and infrastructure specialists to support them. You don't just need pilots. Maintenance is also a key part of this process and training of technical personnel, said chairman of the US Joint Chiefs of Staff, General K.K. Brown, a career F-16 pilot. Moscow has said foreign weapons provided to Ukraine will not alter the outcome of the conflict and may trigger an unintended escalation that would draw the donors into it. Any airfields hosting Ukraine's F-16 fighter jets, whether they are in or outside the country, will be legitimate targets for the Russian military if they participate in combat missions against Moscow's forces, the chairman of the Russian State Duma Defense Committee, Andriy Kartapolov, has warned. German defense minister named the year when war between Russia and NATO could begin. German defense minister Boris Pistorius predicted when Russia would attack NATO. This is known from the build material. Pistorius presented his plans for a new military service in Germany, in Berlin. He attributed the need to a different threatening situation than a few years ago. The minister clarified that we are talking about the war being waged by Russian President Vladimir Putin against Ukraine. He called for the assumption that as early as 2029, Kremlin troops could attack NATO. We must also restore deterrence among personnel, Pistorius stressed. In Germany, they are going to increase the number of armed forces from 181 to 203,000 people. In addition, according to NATO and Bundeswehr estimates, the army needs approximately 200,000 more reservists. The military wants to recruit the most qualified, the most motivated. The implementation of the new plan is expected to cost Germany 1.4 billion euros. The allocation of this amount must be voted on in the 2025 budget. Let us remind you that in Germany they plan to send out questionnaires to 18-year-old boys and girls from which 40,000 will then be selected and sent to military training. In particular, it is noted that after 13 years of the country's refusal to compulsory military service, the head of the German Ministry of Defense presented the idea of recruiting soldiers again. According to all international military experts, it should be assumed that Russia will be able to carry out a military attack on a NATO state or a neighboring state from 2029, Pistorius commented on his decision. Earlier, Boris Pistorius said that Russia continues to accumulate resources to start a war in Europe and Georgia and Moldova is under greatest threat. The Houthis started a joint operation with Iraqi militias against Israel. The Houthi group's military spokesman in Yemen, Yahya Sari, announced that their forces along with Iraqi Islamic resistance carried out two military operations targeting Israeli targets in two cities in the country. According to Sari, this was the first coordinated operation between the Houthis and Iraqi militias. During it, important targets were hit in Ashdod, south of Tel Aviv, and Haifa, north of it. In addition, they carried out a third operation targeting the Tutor ship in the Red Sea because the company that owns it violated the decision to ban entry into the ports of occupied Palestine, the Houthi spokesperson noted. 
The Houthis say the ship was seriously damaged by an attack by an unmanned boat and aerial drones. Sari once again warned all companies about the consequences of interaction with Israel. If the warnings are not taken seriously, company ships will be attacked in our area of operation, said Sari. The Houthis said the Tudor coal carrier was seriously damaged and vulnerable to sinking after they targeted the vessel with an unmanned surface boat, drones and ballistic missiles. The ship was hit by about 126 kilometers southeast of Hodaida. Maritime security firm Ambri said the impact of the unmanned surface vessel caused severe flooding and damage to the engine room, the U.S. Central Command said in a statement on the attack, which was the Houthis' first using a boat as a weapon. It has been launching scores of drone and missile attacks on shipping in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden since November in support of the Palestinians under Israeli attack in Gaza. They have sunk one ship seized another vessel and killed three seafarers in several attacks. Recently, Yemen's Houthi rebels have claimed responsibility for a small watercraft and missile attack that left a Greek-owned cargo ship taking water and in need of rescue near the Red Sea port of Hodaida.